Hey, what's going on? I've been doing a bunch of work with uh, physics in Unreal Engine and specifically around um, ragdoll physics for third person characters. I have a separate video on metahuman ragdoll physics. Uh, if you want to reference that, I go into much more detail, but I also had some questions around how to get it working for VRM for you. Um, I'll just dive right into it. In, in the VRM for you content, um, if you take a look in here, if you actually search for uh, ragdoll, uh, there's a simple ragdoll physics that you can use for your characters that they've sort of set up. If you're not, if you weren't aware, uh, I'll just show you that you can actually drag physics assets into your project. And if I hit play, you'll actually see um, that character ragdoll. So that's kind of cool. Um, so right out of the box, if we clicked on our third person character, um, if you haven't set up a third person character, again, I'll put some links in the description below. Um, I've got a bunch of videos on how to set those up. But um, inside your third person character, if you scroll down to the, um, let's see, where are we? I wanna see what major tab this is. Yeah, the physics tab. Um, and if you uh, open up the eject button, there's a physics asset override. Um, just simply using the asset that I just showed you, the sample asset that is included with VRM for you, you can add that, compile and save your character, and um, you'll be able to start using that ragdoll asset. Um, in your third person character in the event graph, you're gonna need to add a few simple lines of code. Uh, I'm just gonna delete this out for now. Uh, we can always add that back in later, but essentially this is what you're gonna wanna add. You're gonna wanna add a custom event. So you can just you know look for custom event. Uh, when that comes up, you can name it. I named it death. Uh, then we wanna take that out, run it to set simulate physics. Make sure the simulate physics box is checked. That's coming out of your character mesh here. Um, your character movement, you're gonna to wanna to disable the movement because you don't wanna be able to move after your character ragdolls and dies. And then all that I did is set up a keyboard event um, to uh, have the character uh, enact, enact this function. So if I save all that code, I hit play, I hit K, um, your character will ragdoll using that physics asset. The problem is, is that that asset was really set up for, um, uh, for the female. So if you're using an imported VRM for you character, you probably want to um, recreate the physics asset. So let's go ahead and do that for this particular character. Um, this character, uh, I'm just gonna go back to the blueprint. I'm gonna go to the viewport. I'm gonna click on him and I'm gonna look for his mesh. And you'll see that uh, the characters that you import actually come with a physics asset already. There's another one here, but the, I created that on my own just to sort of test all of this out. So I'm gonna force delete that. And we should just be left with, once it's done, we should be left with what you'll find when you import a character to, to, from VRM for you. And this is the physics asset that comes with the dude. So if we actually run this with this physics asset, um, I, will, I will update our blueprint, go into physics, take out the um, sample that we had. This one, I'm gonna remove that completely. It's now gonna use his only available physics asset. If I play that, sort of nothing happens. And the reason for that is if we pull out this physics asset, you can see that um, on the left here, all of these different um, bones and physics assets that have been created are set up as kinematic. And kinematic, um, you know, being represented by this lock here is just showing that it's fixed, right? So if we simulate the physics here, um, nothing is going to happen. Um, so we want to create, like, if we look at this as a, as a converse, this, um, this ragdoll physics that we were using at the beginning, if we simulate that, you can see that it ragdolls appropriately, right? Whereas ours just sits in place. And that's because of this, it's been set up for, for kinematic, um, uh, kinematic work. Okay. So how do we need to get around this? So number one thing is we need to first create a 
new physics asset and assign it to our um, skeletal mesh. You can use all these default settings. That's no problem. It's actually going to do most of the work for us. So when we do that, it creates this brand new asset and you can see that it's basically created the bones pretty well. We can straighten out this um, sphere here just for that to look a little more appropriate. I'm going to turn off the um, the locking, there we go. Um, and then we can kind of get that in the right place. And there's our guy and it, it works pretty well. So let's test out that asset. If we go back into our blueprint again, um, we click on this, we now swap out this physics override asset with the new one that we just created. Uh, this guy's name is FUM, yeah. And this is the one, Umira physics, that's the one we just created. Compile, save, and we hit play, and then K on our keyboard, he actually ragdolls. But that's not perfect. Um, there's still a problem with that, in that um, his arms look a little bit funky. So let's go back into our physics asset that we just auto-generated. Uh, by the way, if you ever wanted to play with the settings that are being used to generate this physics body, you can adjust these settings and then generate all bodies, and it'll regenerate um, this ragdoll mesh. Um, or these physics assets that were created, but um, they're pretty good out of the box for our purposes anyways. Okay, so the problem um, with uh, the way that the character's working right now is that his arms sort of break in the middle there and that doesn't look very good. So the reason that that's happening is that they've got one physics asset here across these two bones. So if we look at the sphere that I have selected, it's been created for this uh, upper arm. So what I would do to fix this is I would actually shrink this and move this on top of um, the upper arm bone. Uh, and I do the same on this side. Okay, so now we've got the upper arm bone covered, but we have nothing in the lower arm. So let's create a physics asset for that. So what we need to do is we need to go into our uh, options here. We need to go into show all bones and we need to navigate to where the lower arm is. So if we can find the upper arm, right beneath it, you'll see that there's a lower arm. So these, the, the skeleton picture here is the actual bones, you can see that. And then these little, I don't know, circle with eggs or dots in it, that's representing the, the physics asset. So you can see on the lower arm, there's no physics asset created. So if we right click the lower arm, uh, we add a shape, we add a sphere, uh, not a sphere, come on. <laughs> If we add a uh, capsule, um, that's exactly what we want to do. Now we have a physics asset attached to the lower arm. And obviously we want to do that on the other side as well. So let's navigate over to the other arm. Here it is here. Upper arm, lower arm, there's no physics asset. Add shape, add capsule. Cool. Um, we can get out of the skeleton option. So show all bones. We can go actually back to hide bones. And now you'll see that we have a lower arm added to our physics tree. Cool, um, we can rotate this. We can R, uh, shrink this down. There we go. And then I'm just gonna lengthen this so that it fits. I see, um, too big. I want it to fit in between the hand and the lower arm, something like that. You can play around and sort of get it the way that you like. We don't have to worry about it too, too much about it being perfect. And then we'll do the same on the other side. R, select the center square there to get the whole sizing tree. Uh, e to get the um, angle and rotation device. And then we'll slide that into place there. There, now we have a new physics asset over top of each bone. We're still not there yet because we need to link these up. So the way that this works right now is in this tree, um, we've basically got our upper arm connected to our upper chest and our right hand. But what we wanna do is we wanna connect this to the lower arm and not have it connected to the hand. So I'm actually going to go to the hand itself and delete out, um, so the green is the physics bobbles, the, the spheres or the, the canisters that we made there. And this brown part is the actual uh, attaching physics between uh, the different parts. So I'm actually just gonna delete that right out. 
And so now we have the upper arm connected to the chest, lower arm connected to nothing, and hand connected to nothing. So on the upper arm, I want this to connect to the lower arm. So I'm going to right click on the screen square that represents the upper arm, and I am going to add a constraint, and I'm gonna do this to the, um, what side of the, side of the body are we on? Uh, right, okay, the right lower arm. So now we have a constraint between the upper arm and the lower arm, and then uh, we also need to make one between the lower arm and the hand. So we're gonna create a constraint to the right hand. Boom, done. Okay, so we have upper arm, constraint to lower arm, lower arm, constraint to hand, and now we have this all working. Um, we can look at what they did on the upper arm um, and look at the constraints. So upper arm to upper chest, um, and they've got it all limited at 44, 45, 45, 45, and that's actually what happened with our entire rag doll. So we're just gonna follow that. So um, if we click on the constraint between the lower arm and the upper arm, we can see that the angular motion is free form right now. Um, and we wanna switch that all to limited and we can leave that at 45 degrees. Um, I go more in depth in the video that I referenced on the MetaHumans on how all, this all works, but essentially you're just, um, you're just putting in um, how much or how uh, little the joints are constrained or how much they can swing in space. And so basically we said, we've limited them all at 45 degree angulars on um, the different planes, the X and Y plane, the X and Z plane, and the uh, twist. So we've all limited those at 45 degrees, which should suit our purpose. But if you want uh, more constraints, you can dig into that. You can watch the previous uh, MetaHumans video and you can adjust these uh, as much as you want. Okay, so now there's a constraint here and here at 45 um, degrees, and then we wanna do the same thing for the lower arm and the hand. So you can either click on the lower arm or the hand, find the constraint that's built between them, and do the same thing. Scroll down, limited, 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 and you can use the default values of 45. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side of the arm, of course. So we wanna delete out the hand constraint, Boom, gone. Um, and then we wanna build a constraint to the lower arm constraint. Uh, this is now the left side, left lower arm. We wanna go into that constraint, limited, limited, limited. And then we wanna do the same thing for the hand. So let's go into lower arm, build a constraint. Uh, left hand, where are you? Ba, 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 ba. Boom, um, okay. And then looking for the hand asset, this one says hand, we're going to limit, 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 and we should be good to go. So if I hit simulate, you can see the physics are still working well. And if I go back into the game and hit play, and then K to ragdoll, you now have ragdoll physics on your VRM for you anime character. Um, the last thing that I'll do is I'll just show you something else. So. The, if I hit play and I walk around, um, there's physics that's done on the hair. Um, and there's different things that are coming from the original physics asset that was created for the character. So the problem is, is that we don't want the new physics asset that we created specifically for Ragdoll running the entire time on our character. So what we can do is we can go back to that setting that I showed you at the beginning and this, um, we can go to the physics asset override, and we can make sure that the original physics asset for the character is running on the character um, out of the box. And then what we can do is we can alter the event graph to only introduce the new physics asset when we're running through the ragdoll or the death sequence. And that's what this extra little box was that I had sort of removed uh, at the beginning. That's what that's doing. So if we look at the code here, we'd have the mesh running into this. We want to target the mesh. We want a new physics asset. So basically we're saying on the death or ragdoll event, um, change from that original physics asset that we had established as the override into this new physics asset that we just created for ragdoll. So change the physics asset, then simulate the physics, and then disable the character movement. And so what that does is that when I hit play, um, this is now running the original uh, 
physics asset that came out of the, the VRM for you integration. And then only when I hit K, it introduces that new uh, ragdoll physics asset. So that's it. That's how you would get your VRM for you character to ragdoll. Uh, I'm sure there's other ways to, to do it. Um, you could probably, uh, if we pulled up that ragdoll um, example, you could take a look at how they've done it um, in the VRM for you content. So if I went down here and looked for ragdoll, by the way, if you're not, if you're not seeing this folder, you can go into view options and make sure that you have, um, you know, show, I think it's plugin content here and show engine content. And then these uh, subfolders will show up. Um, anyways, you could take a look at this asset in more detail and see how um, they've set up the constraints. Um, you know, they've done different things here um, to maybe work a little bit better with these characters. Um, and then you could, you know, design the physics objects how you want for your character. You could follow their example, but I think, you know, what I showed you in this video manually creating it is pretty straightforward and, and simple and probably a little bit easier way to do it. But um, there's multiple ways. You could probably copy this asset and swap out the character and things like that. But anyways, um, that's it. I hope that's helpful. Hope you enjoyed this um, and like and subscribe for more content and we'll see you around.